Father, we thank you for this moment. We thank you, God, for this gathering. We thank you, God, that you are in this place. We thank you for your power, for your spirit, for your presence. God, I pray in the name of Jesus that you would word my mouth. That you would give me what to say, how to say it. That you would use me for your glory. It's not about me and it's not about those around me, but it's all about you getting glory, God. That somebody's life might be changed tonight. And God, we thank you and we praise you. We honor you. We adore you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, clap your hands for God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Brother DJ. Amen. Uh, I had him do that song because we all need a heart to forgive. The problem in the body of Christ these days is that we hold on to so much that sister and brother have done to me. And I can never forget it. And I can never forgive them. And I can never let it go. But then we wonder why we can only go so far in God. And that's because of the things that we hold on to. But if we ever got to a place where we got like God and just forgot about it, how high would we go in God? Yeah. Man, I want you to turn with me in Scripture today. I've already given honor today. I did it early on purpose. Go with me to Scripture today. Uh, we are in Scripture, 1 John, the fourth chapter. We're going to start at the 20th verse. 1 John, 1 John, not St. John, 1 John, <laughs> the fourth chapter. And we're starting at the 20th verse. If, when you have that, if you'll stand for the reading of God's word. First John, chapter 4, verse 20. I'm reading from the NLT version. It says, if anyone says, I love God. And hates, detests, abominates his brother in Christ. He is a liar. For he who does not love his brother, whom he has seen, cannot love God, whom he has not seen. And this command, charge, order, injunction, we have from him. That he who loves God shall love his brother also. May God add a blessing to the reading of his word. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and tell them you say you love me. Turn to somebody else and say you say you love me. Amen. You may have your seat. Come on, clap your hands for God. Hallelujah. Love is a simple word that carries a lot of weight. We often take this word lightly and we'll throw it around like it's nothing. It has become cliche to tell each other, I love you. Oftentimes, we say it to other Christians in passing. But when dismissed from their presence, show the opposite. You see, our actions speak louder than our words. And our silence is premeditated murder. In the Bible that we're reading in the scripture, he says, if anyone says, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar. I began to think about people in the body of Christ that we often say, I love you. But when we walk away, we cut each other down. We put each other down. Well, I'm glad y'all shouted earlier. We put each other down. We hurt one another. Yeah. And we think it's no big deal. I'm just calling you brothers so you can pray about this. And I'm just this and I'm just that. But we hurt each other and think it's nothing. But yet we say we love God. God is love. My grandfather used to say this all the time. And Pastor Cameron can attest to this. He would get up and preach every Sunday about love. And he would say, the love of many has wax cold. In other words, in the body of Christ, we don't love the same way we used to love. Uh -huh. It used to be that the saints were genuinely happy to see one another. I didn't have to put on a fake smile because I was really glad to see you. But now in the body of Christ, when we come to church, we don't want to sit next to certain people. Well, we don't want to talk to certain people. Uh -huh. We can walk by certain people. Well, we can act like we're this and we're that. And we forget that somebody... Had to love on us yeah. when we were in the midst yeah. 
of our messed up stuff. See, it's easy to judge Sally for being a hoe, but you forgot you was a hoe. You forgot you was a whoremonger. It's easy to judge Joe for smoking dope, but you forgot you was a crackhead. It's easy to judge Melissa for getting on a stripper pole, but you forgot you was working 6th Avenue, and eventually they moved you up to 7th Avenue. It's easy to look at my brother funny and forget about my stuff because somewhere along the way somebody told me that I have arrived. Well, I got news for you. The same way you arrive, you can depart. How can we say we love God but hate the works of his hands? See, what you don't realize is that I have been fearfully and wonderfully made by God. Which means that God had all hands in making me. And you had the audacity to put your mouth on what God made with his hands, yet you say you love him? I don't understand how we can lie in the house of the Lord. How can we reach the people? See, y'all said, this is supposed to be a mission rally. What is he doing? We're going to deal with mission me today. Because the first mission is us. Because you can't reach nobody out there. And you can't even get yourself straight in here. How you going to go out there and tell somebody Jesus loves them and you can't love each other in here? We bringing folks into chaos and calling it church. A chirp and a shout ain't much if ain't no Jesus in it. We got a whole lot of empty vessels jumping nowadays. There's a spirit working, but it ain't God. I shout because I saw the pastor shout. I shout because I saw the missionary shout. But what you better realize is the pastor had to go through something to get where he's at. And what he is doing is real. It's real. God don't need nobody that's a part-time Christian. He don't need no part-time saints. Because you are eight. You ain't a saint. You're what I call church folk. Church folk, church folk just come to church. They may clap their hands. They may stomp their feet. They may even sing in the choir. Sometimes they sit in the pulpit. Church folk. But when they leave here, they can, they can care less about the church. They can care less about Jesus. They can care less about God. They just here. Because the church doors is open and they don't want pastor calling them. Saying, where are you at? We missed you today. They don't want to get a message on Facebook from the pastor saying, we love you. Where are you been? So they come to church. But the church ain't in here. They walk in the building, but nothing changes before they leave out the building. Yeah, I know you got a great voice. Yeah, I know it's melodious and you can just sing. But I'd rather have somebody with one leg, one eye, one hand. A half a foot cobbled up here with no voice, struggling, can't sing with the anointing of God and get up here and do the very best they can. Yeah. I'd rather have them come up here than a whole bunch of folk that ain't got nothing, ain't trying to get nothing, ain't feeling God on the inside, just want to get up here and make a noise. But you say, you love God? That's what they say. We say, we love him so. Oh, how I love Jesus. But when I leave here, I got my favorite uh, CD that ain't God in the tape deck. When I walk out, but oh, how I love Jesus. No, not so. Oh, how I love him. But when I leave here, I'm trying to get crunk. I'm trying to do this and I'm trying to do that. But oh, how I love Jesus. Come out the club. You shouldn't be out there. Oh, I'm witnessing. You witnessing all right. You witnessing one drink to the next drink to the next drink. You got to be careful. Don't put yourself in situations that will destroy you. Don't you know that the enemy is cunning and he wants to destroy every one of us? He don't want to see us prosper. He don't want to see us grow. He wants to see us go down. 
He wants to see you struggle. That's why he's so hard on us. That's why he puts so much hatred in some of our hearts. That's why we can't look at one another with a smile because we don't mean it. Folks is getting cut every day by us, by people that's supposed to be saved and in the body of Christ. I don't understand how a saint can be mean. I don't understand how a saint can be mean. I don't understand how you can call yourself saved and be evil. I don't understand it. I don't understand that. Help me. I don't understand how you can be mean. Even if it's your own kids, even if it's your own brother, your own sister, even if it's your own wife, your own husband, how you can be a saint and be mean? Don't you know just because it's your wife or your husband, don't give you the right to be mean to them? But you say you love God. You say you love him. Oh, how I love Jesus. But here's the wonderful thing about God. In spite of how we act, oh my God. he loves us so. And he gives us words like this and chances like this to get ourselves right with him. To get ourselves together. We have a contradictory love. We say, I love you, but I don't like you. We say I love you, but I don't like you. I'm trying to figure that one out. I love mashed potatoes, but I don't like mashed potatoes. I love pizza, but I hate pizza. Now, which do you believe? Because I'm confused. Do you love me or do you hate me? If you're going to like me, you got to love me. And if you're going to love me, you got to like me. I don't understand the difference. That's because there ain't one. See, we've gotten in the body of Christ and taken little cliches and ran with them and ain't even biblical. But we're running around here so glad in Jesus with our little cliches and ain't got no word in you. That's the problem. Read your Bible. You might know something. But if you don't need the book, you can't. You don't know nothing. What's in you going to come out? And that's why Jay-Z's coming out of some folk because they ain't got no word in them. That's why you need a life coach because you can't get you ain't getting the word. Wow. If you get the word in you, you won't need a life coach. Jesus is my life coach. Yeah. Yeah. He's my everything that I need. When I'm struggling, I can call him. When I need a word, I can get in his word. You need a life coach. No, you need to get a life. That's the problem. We have too many life coaches running around here. But when is somebody going to start coaching folk how to get to heaven? When is somebody going to start telling me how to get to heaven? How to see Jesus when he comes? How to get my soul right when he comes? How to be delivered? How to be set free? When is somebody going to start teaching that kind of stuff? I've had enough life coaching to get me through life. But I'm trying to make it to the afterlife. But you say you love me. The problem in the body of Christ is that we don't know how to forgive each other. We don't know how to just let it go. How to just let it roll on. Some of the stuff we fought over is so stupid and so petty. You stole my you stole my shirt. You stole my meatball off my spaghetti. I can't believe you just stuck your fork in this. I can't believe you just did it. We fought over stupid petty stuff and then hold the grudge for 30 years over something stupid and petty. They stole $10 from me 10 years ago and you still hold it. You still hold the same grudge. Don't you know the whole time you hold the grudge, somebody didn't got their life together and you still holding their past over them and they on their way to heaven and you on your way to hell? 
Ephesians 4 and 31 through 32 says, Get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, harsh words, and slander, as well as types of evil behavior. Instead, be kind to each other, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, just as God through Christ has forgiven you. God forgave us of our stuff. So why can't you forgive others of their stuff? I said this the other night. Learn to love somebody out of their hell. Folks is coming to church broken, tore up, messed up, struggling, going through. A lot on their mind. Some folks want to commit suicide when they leave here. And we're so busy bickering and fighting with one another and cutting our eyes at one another that we ain't even in the flow of the anointing. We're not even in the flow of the spirit. We can't even sit when the brother's about to kill himself. And then we're surprised when Johnny took his life. Guess what? There was no surprise. Johnny gave you all the signs. But you didn't take the time to pay attention to Johnny to see that Johnny was trying to cry out for help. But we say we love God. Wow. Stop. I repeat, stop. Trying to keep me bound in my past mistakes. God delivered me. So why should I be bound? Why should I be bound? I'm tired of folks trying to put the clank clank on me. Trying to put me in shackles from my past. The devil is a lie. Yes, There's no mystery to my history. I've done a whole lot of things that I ain't proud of in life. Me too. A whole lot of stuff that will blow your mind. But God, God, who is rich in grace and in mercy, wow. saved my life when I couldn't save myself. Wow. Freed my mind Woo. when I felt like I was going down, sister. When I felt like it was the end. In a basement for three days. Contemplating how to kill myself. But God. And then you wonder why. I'm the way I am. The reason why I'm sold out for God. Is because of all the things. That he brought me out of. Woo. That's why I'll struggle. That's why I'll go through. Because I realize that the things that he's brought me out of. This is nothing. If he can bring me out of that, he can bring me out of this. The Bible declares in Romans 8, 1 and 2, it says, So now there is no condemnation for those who belong to Christ Jesus. And because you belong to him, the power of the life-giving spirit has freed you from the power of sin that leads to death. God has forgiven. He has set us free. Don't let folk hold over your head all the things that you have done. Because folk will try to put you in hell. And don't realize that you might just step back out of the way and they're going to fall in themselves. Folks will try to hold you hostage. Try to hold your anointing hostage. Try to keep you from walking in what God has called you to do. But the devil is a liar tonight. The devil is a liar tonight. Because we gonna get ourselves together. We gonna get to the point that when we say we love one another, we really love one another. We gonna line up with the word of God and do it the way God called us to do it. We gonna start standing on the word of God. Start walking in the word of God. If you stay in the spirit, you won't fulfill the lust of this old flesh. In other words, you won't have time to cut your eyes at nobody. Because you'll be too busy concerned about serving Jesus. You'll be too busy being concerned about lifting up the Savior. Get your focus right. Get your focus right. You want to win souls out there? Win yourself back to Christ in here. We got to win ourselves back to Christ in here. I can't tell them to come off the street. I dare not tell them to come into a mess. Because it ain't going to do them no good. They'd be better off standing out on the outside. But oh, when the saints get together. When the saints get it together. When the saints say, you know what? I love you in spite of what you've done to me. I love you in spite of the words that we just had last week. I love you in spite of what we just went through 15 minutes.
minutes ago. I love you in spite of how you just looked at me. When we get the attitude that God is great and the rest don't matter, then we'll go higher in here. But until then, we'll just keep walking around saying, I love the Lord. I love the Lord, but I hate my mother-in-law. I love the Lord, but I hate my brother-in-law. I love the Lord, but I hate my sister. I love the Lord, but he gets on my nerves. I love the Lord, but she gets on my nerves. I love the Lord. You say you love me? You say you love me? Somebody said prove it. Treat me right. Treat me right. I ain't talking about me. I'm just saying treat me right. Love me right. Give me the love you want back. It's easy to have everybody love on you. But where is the love? When Brother Rob is going through. Where's it at then? Are you going to judge him for what you think about him? Or are you going to tell everybody to shut up and let's love on him? Get out your cliques. Get out your circles. Your circles of liars and thieves. Because we get together in these circles. And talking crazy about the folks in the house of God. But God ain't called us to that. How can we walk together unless we agree? How can we be in the same church Sunday after Sunday after Sunday after Sunday after Sunday and still have hatred toward one another? But you say you love me. Then you wonder why there's so much hell in your life and you can't have no peace. I think there's a scripture in the Bible where it talks about minding your own business. It talks about minding your own business. The reason why you got hell in your house is because you stuck your nose in somebody else's hell in their house. The reason why your kids ain't acting right because you get on the phone hollering at other folks about their kids and telling them what they need to do to inside and your kids ain't even acting right. And you wonder why your kids is acting a monkey. Because they see mama acting a monkey. They hear mama talking about Satan. They hear dad talking about Joe and Satan. That's why kids don't want to come to church. Because they say that but a bunch of old hypocrites in the church. And I used to say, y'all don't know what y'all talking about. Y'all don't know what y'all talking about. But when I sat back and I looked. I began to see. That's what they're talking about. That's why they don't want to come to church. Because they come to church and see us shouting, dancing, turn, holler, spit, run, do the flip, do the monkey, do this and do that. Over sin. Don't you know when you put your mouth on somebody, you just committed sin. Backbiting is sin. When you deceive your brother or your sister, that is sin. No, we think only drinking sin, but some of us still doing that anyway. When we say drinking sin, we say cussing that sin. Some of us still doing that too. We say that, oh, we're just a little word to slip. No, the devil is a lie. You didn't slip. You walk right into You planned it. You know just what you was going to tell them. Yep. I'm going to give them a word. I'm going to tell them what I think. Yes, and you start off doing good. And pretty soon something get a hold of your mouth that it ain't the Holy Ghost. It's premeditated. I told you. Your silence is premeditated murder. Because the whole time you sitting there thinking about what you going to say. How you going to tell them. How you going to make them feel. Because of how they made you feel. But just remember, baby. You read. Come on in here. 
what you sow. Yes, sir. Just, you need to stop sowing discord amongst the brethren. Yes, that goes for the sisters too. Yes, stop sowing seeds of discord. Yes, we plant little seeds here and there. I'm just telling you, sister. I'm just telling you because I need a witness when, you know, I go to the, I need a witness. You can understand what they said to me. I just want to see if I'm right. You ain't right. Now, if you got to go to 15 people in the church to find out if you're right, then baby, you're wrong. You just need to shut up and pray. Have quiet time with Jesus. Sometimes the problem ain't my sister. Sometimes the problem ain't my brother. Sometimes the problem is me. I told you we're going to deal with mission me tonight. I don't want you to leave tonight and not heard this word. I didn't want you to leave tonight and not hear this word. Because now you have no excuse. You have no excuse for cussing no more. You have no excuse for drinking no more. You have no excuse for getting high no more. Talking about you, you ain't got no cataracts. You don't live in California. You live in Des Moines, Iowa. It is illegal. Well, we even got the nerve to go back to the old woman and say, God put this here for you and for me. Any old excuse to see it. The saints will make an excuse to sin. It's a sad day, brother, when the saints will make an excuse to sin. Come on, come on. But come out of that corner. You can't hide. I ain't talking about hiding from me. You can't hide from God because of the eyes of the Lord. Or in every place. Beholding the good and the evil. He seen you when you was. He seen you when you was doing your thing. He seen you late at night creeping. God seen it all. He seen you day creepers too. We always get on the night creepers, but there's some day creepers. There's some morning creepers. There's some afternoon creepers. There's some three o'clock on Friday creepers. And stay away from happy hour. You better get happy in Jesus. Come on, sir. Oh, I just go for the appetizers. I go because my coworkers go and we have appetizers. We have a little lunch when we leave. You know, Fred, Joe, and Joanne, and we all go, and we, we have a few appetizers, Sister April. The devil is an appetizer lie. You have more than appetizers. You have having spritzes and all kinds of stuff. Just because it looks fruity don't mean there's no alcohol in it. Or oh, if somebody walk in here, they won't know because it's truly looking. The devil is a lie. And that's why you stumble into your car at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. I'm trying to quit, but it keeps hitting me. It's time for us to get free from silly sin. I call it silly because it's dumb stuff that don't have to happen. You see, God give us free choice. And we make the choices that we make. And then we suffer the consequences that we suffer. And then we wonder why we're going through. It's because of the dumb stuff you decided to do. But the wonderful thing about God is that he is ever so forgiving. The Bible says that he is faithful and just to forgive you. He will forgive you of everything you've ever done wrong in your life. God is no respecter of person. If he can do it for me, he can do it for you. God brought me out. He will bring you up. God freed me from alcohol. He freed my brother from alcohol. He will free you from alcohol. God freed me from smoking marijuana. God will free you from smoking marijuana. God freed me from running women. God will free you from running women. For you women running men. I think I didn't leave y'all out. I'll throw you the mic, Sister DC. <laughs> running all them men. 
Some of you brothers got harems. Some of y'all know what that is and some of y'all do. You got harems. Because you got a whole lot of women in your clique. You got a different one for each night. And the sad part is some of them friends. With benefits. But you better get your life together. And when you get your life together, brother, then God will give you the one that's for you. And you won't have to screw everything in town. But you'll have that one that you can say, oh, how I love her so. She is the sweetest thing I've ever seen. The sweetest thing i ever known. When you get one like that, then God did something. But if you feel like you got to have a new pair of legs in your bed every night, then you need to check if Mother and Sister Devils and she tell you to check your Holy Ghost because something ain't right. I did not let my pastor start going off on the men and left the women out. Kill them. But y'all ain't exempt. Because some of y'all spread them from the east to the west, to the north to the south. For a man that don't belong to you. But you say you love God. How can you love God? And you give away your precious gift. To anything that will walk through the door. How can you say you love God? How can you say you love yourself? When you give something so wonderful. That was designed for marriage. To any Tom, Dick and Harry. George. And whoever else wants it. God has told you to better than that. Yes, you yes, are sir. better than that. Yes, You're better than that. Yes. But it ain't enough for me to tell you. You've got to know it for yourself. Yes, so if you don't get nothing else tonight. I know y'all didn't get to jump. I know y'all didn't get to run. <laughs> what I want you to do is run to the altar. Yes, it's time to run to the altar. Stand to your feet with me. I'm going to ask my evangelist president to come. Are you able? If you don't feel like it, you stay back there. It's okay. But if you're able, I want her to come. This is a mighty woman of God. Yes, she is. And there's more in her than what y'all will ever know. But I respect her in her place. She is our evangelist president. Yes, yes. I want her to just come and lead us in this altar call. Yes, 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 if you feel up to it. I believe he covered from wall to wall. Yes. Carpet to carpet. Yeah. But I'm going to leave you with this. It says, The soul that said it, ah. it was ah. sure to happen. Oh, Don't let it be said too late. My God, my God, my God. Word of God says, The day you hear my voice, harden oh, not your heart. Yes. That was, it's just that plain and simple. Yes, it is. The choice is yours. Oh. Can't you hear the Spirit saying, make a change? Yes, if those issues and those things that he talked about, if any of them are, is that you? Step out, make a change. I dare you, turn it over to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Pray, church. It's time to pray, church. The world that we're living in right now is a dangerous world. And we think that the old is dying, but it's the young that's dying. And then we want to act like we don't really understand or we really don't have a clue to what's going on. The younger kids know more than we do. Nothing's a secret anymore. But I beg you on tonight, if I were you, surrender your all to God. Give it to Jesus. 
Give it to Jesus. Trust God. Believe in him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And if you're not ready for that change, if you just say, lift your hands and say, I, I just need some help. You can come down here to this altar. We will pray with you and ask God to give you the strength to overcome these things of the world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.